We are going through a slightly sad time at Adventure Bike TV because we are saying goodbye to a very old and very faithful friend. And it's a bike that for me represents the best, I think, of what a big bore capacity adventure bike can do. And whilst it's been on lots of adventures with us and has featured lots in the show, it's never actually had its own review. This Triumph Tiger has a history, a good history. In fact, a great history. In its short two year life, it has achieved more than many will in a lifetime. It came off the production line and was one of the four lucky bikes we took to the Arctic Circle for our great Arctic Bike Off TV series. On its return from Norcap, the producer loved it so much, he asked to keep it for a while and when Triumph forgot he had it, he managed to buy it off them for a steal. Since then, it has had a rally overhaul. It's completed the Stella Alpina Rally, two Daffy Dakars, and two Iron Butts rides. Now, in case you don't know, the Iron Butt rides are a thousand miles in less than 24 hours. And when we went through the Pyrenees, it was see, the only bike that never missed a beat. Okay, so in total, the Triumph has lost us a total of zero time. Nil point. Nothing. Perfect so far. Andrew's KTM, a total of 50 minutes. 50? 50, 50 5 minutes. 50. Now, Graham, it might take me a while to add this up. Any six good? hours and 25 minutes. <laughs> six hours six and hours, 25. Six hours and 25 minutes. Congratulations, Graham. <laughs> and don't forget, it was always carrying a load of extra weight in the form of filming gear and our producer's belly. It's safe to say that this Tiger is a real one-off. First, let's talk about the suspension. Well, in fact, this hasn't changed. The XC already has a half-decent suspension and we could have replaced it, but it seemed like a big expense when realistically, the producer's riding level isn't really high enough to justify it. And because of that same riding level, the protection was also upgraded with alt-rider crash bars and belly pan. For the Pyrenees adventure, the bike needed roadbook navigation, and you can't get better in our view than the Touratech Electric Roadbook and IMO, with of course handlebar controls. A great wrap job gave it that unique look, along with a whole load of extra bits from RNG, like fog lights, and other bits and pieces like a top end Scott oil. Importantly, we only added what was needed. We didn't want a heavy bike just for no reason.
best way to describe this as a bike to ride is to go back when we rode four of them 5,000 miles in just two weeks up to Norcap and back a couple of years ago. It's responsive, it's comfortable, and with that unique triple engine character, at no point on that trip did I wish I was on any other bike. And despite being almost the same weight as a KTM 1190, the Tiger makes a better than reasonable job of riding off-road, as Tom found out on the Stella Alpina Rally and the Pyrenees Adventure last summer. If I was going to criticise anything on the 2014 Tiger, it would be the brakes. They were never the greatest. And of course, none of those triple engines would give you much in the way of engine braking, but it just takes a little getting used to. This particular bike is one of a very few rally versions we have seen or heard of, and you know what? I think it looks the dog sphericals. I've liked the Tiger 800 ever since I first rode one, where actually I was racing a Tiger Moth aircraft. But since then, I've ridden to the Arctic Circle and back on one, I've ridden all the way across Europe and back on one, and I've done off-road training on it. And it doesn't matter whether it's the older models or the newer models, I've been a big fan of all of them. But I don't know whether it's a sense of nostalgia or a sense of loyalty, because I rode it up to the Arctic Circle and back, but the 2014 800XC will always hold a special place in my heart and there'll always be room for one in my garage. <laughs>